It's Eric's jaw right to the shore. Well, it was supposed to be a fairy tale for uh, life for Eric Lindros when he came here to Philadelphia in 1992 as a highly touted savior of the franchise. Eight years later, Lindros appears to have played in his last game in the orange and black. To his credit, number 88 has been to the Stanley Cup Finals once and won the Hart Trophy as the league MVP in 95. But in recent years, his relationship with Bob Clark deteriorated. Michael Barkan has more on Lindros's up and down career in Philadelphia. When he arrived as a fresh-faced 19-year-old, Eric Lindros literally had the world at his skates. There's a shot from the right circle. Lindros score! There it is! Number he possessed the hands of a superstar and the size of a brawler. He could skate, he could score, and most of all, he could hit. Lindros avoiding the check attempt by Redden. And Dackel will feel the wrath of Lindros. Oh, and Lindros hammered Dackel into the boards. And Dackel has not gotten up. That's the hardest hit I've ever seen. All of these elements made the Flyers captain a fan favorite. He helped build a new building. He led the Flyers back from the depths of the conference to the elite of the league. Lindros won his first league MVP after the 95-96 season. Two years later, in 97, he led the Flyers to the Stanley Cup Finals. But the orange and black were swept in four games. Lindros scored just one goal. And in the next season, an old nemesis, injury, reared his head once more. Back to a one goal game again. And thundering hit by Casper Ryder. And he's hurting. This was a concussion, and much more serious than that. Concussions forced the retirement of Lindros' brother from the game of hockey. By the time Lindros returned for the playoffs, his team took an unexpected early exit. Groshek to the high side, the pass down low, Shatan. Back to Groshek, off the puck, rebound, he scores! He scores! Michael Groshek scores in overtime, and the Flyers' season is over. As the next season came around, the pressure was on from the fans, who remembered the five year promise of an owner, and from the general manager, who made his team's captain his country's captain. Lindros on high he went sprawling and it deflected over the net. No gold medal, no Stanley Cup, prolonged contract negotiations, all boiled over for Bob Clark. He laid down the gauntlet. You want to be paid as the best player in the game, then be the best player in the game. For three quarters of the season, Lindros did just that. He was a leading candidate for his second MVP, all until one fateful night in Nashville. He had a chest injury that caused a collapse of his right lung. You don't worry about the next game. You don't. You don't worry about uh, the first round. You you worry about uh, you know what's going to happen in the next hour. The injury left the Flyers without Lindros for the playoff run. Another first round exit followed. It left the captain and his family unsettled about the Flyers' medical staff, and things only got worse this past season. Lindros was again in and out of the lineup with minor concussions. Then came March 7th, and a hit from Hal Gill. A firestorm erupted. When we spoke with the doctor yesterday, he said that, uh, that he had been hit and uh, that he had migraine headaches and that he had taken a, a lot of Advil, and uh, these were the results of it. Initially, we don't think it's anything to do with the concussions. He just wasn't feeling well and had a headache. Uh, he was zoning out on a, on a few plays and, and uh, we roomed with, I roomed with him that night and, and he told told me that uh, he didn't remember a few shifts uh, and from that point I knew it was it was more than just headaches it was more likely post concussion if Eric himself were complaining about our trainers or our doctors or if any of the other players were complaining about our trainers or our doctors it would be taken care of instantly hockey shouldn't be like this hockey should be just strap on and skate coat and play you get hurt, you know, you heal, you get back out and play. This, all this other stuff is really frustrating. And, uh, you know, I haven't said anything in the past, and I'm just, uh, that's it. I just, you know, I'm, I bowled over it. This is, I'm, I'm really, really unhappy about what's going on here. Lindros missed the remainder of the regular season and the first two rounds of the playoffs. He returned to find his upstart teammates led by a new captain, Eric Desjardins. They were one win away from a return trip to the Stanley Cup. Despite his efforts, it wasn't meant to be.
Lindros remains down on the ice. This is the worst case scenario here for Eric Lindros. Lindros's sixth concussion followed that Scott Stevens hit, and the status of his health is still up in the air. And in keeping with his bizarre but true relationship with the Flyers, Lindros and his representatives waited until 11.59 Monday night, one minute before most hockey experts expected him to sign the Flyers' $8.5 million offer sheet. But Lindros turns a deaf ear and walks away from an eight-year marriage that, like so many marriages, began with much hope but ended in so much bitterness. For Comcast Sportsnet, I'm Michael Barkan. Perfection, but first, it wouldn't be hockey if we didn't have Eric Lindros to talk about. That's right, number 88 has had enough of Philadelphia. Flyers general manager Bob Clark wants to get together with Eric Lindros and talk about a possible return to the team. The former captain still recovering from a series of concussions and won't be ready to play again until December or January. Now, Publis reports say Clark hoped and expected to meet with Lindros in Toronto later this month. However, I spoke with Lindros's agent, Gordon Kirk, this afternoon, and he told me while he has spoken with Clark, Eric doesn't want to since he has no interest in returning to play for the Flyers. No meeting has been scheduled whatsoever, and uh, there will be no meeting uh, to discuss Eric's returning to the Flyers. I, I believe Eric made it. Uh, clear when we had the uh, uh, statement when when he uh, rejected the qualifying offer, and several times since then that that Eric has moved on from there. He said it was a very sad decision because of his respect for the fans in Philadelphia, and also his respect for his teammates. That made it a very sad decision, but it was a decision that he felt he had to make in the interest of his own well-being and recovery, etc. So uh, there really is no sense in, in meeting to discuss uh, a return to the Flyers, which, which is not going to happen. Well, you can tell us then here on November 4th, 2000, that a trade's inevitable and, and we won't see Eric Lindros in the orange and black ever again? Well, the, as I said before, Eric has moved on from then, uh, from there, and, and I think that whether a trade happens or not uh, is, is to a large part in the hands of the, the Flyers. The Flyers still control Eric's rights, and Eric respects that. Uh, but as far as being a Flyer, Eric has moved on from there. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Michael Barkan in our Comcast Sportsnet studio. We have some breaking news to report to you. The much-awaited, the long-awaited, much-talked-about trade between the Philadelphia Flyers and New York Rangers is about to officially happen. Here's the trade. Jan Halavich, the left wing. Pavel Brendel, the left wing. And Kim Janssen, the defenseman, going to the Flyers for Eric Lindros. And this is after nine years and one month and 21 days. And here's Bob Clark on the announcement. finished the deal with the Rangers. It actually, at this stage, started a week ago Sunday, and Glenn and I had agreed upon the compensation for Eric, and then they, they used the week to get Eric under contract and have the medicals and stuff, and we uh, did the deal with the league on Friday afternoon, late Friday afternoon, and uh, the Rangers asked to to have the press conference late today, so, yeah, and that was fine with us. We think we, we ended up doing what we hoped to do right from the start, and that was to, to get some young players. We wanted to get more scoring into our lineup, and Halavich has proven he can do that, and Brendel is certainly a young prospect who looks like he's going to be able to do that and could be could be a great scorer for us and and we needed a puck carrying or a puck moving more defenseman and and when we got that um, i think the return to the rangers if if lindros doesn't play of a first round pick is is fine from our standpoint because we would give up a first round pick for the players that we got from them, and they should get something if Lindros can't play. Take some time, but adding uh, Eric Lindros, I can say, uh, from having played with him, from having played against him, uh, uh, in all situations, uh, is a great day for the New York Rangers organization. 
And um, I just would like to say on behalf of my teammates and Mike and Brian and uh, everybody here that uh, would like to welcome Eric and his family to the uh, New York Rangers organization. So Eric, if you'd come on up here and uh, put on a uh, very proud New York Rangers uh, jersey here. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. So we got a lot of kind words, uh, and we've got a lot of work ahead of us, but it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to our, uh, our challenge. Um, it's kind of uh, ironic that, that Mark uh, is here today and, and uh, was kind enough to fly up to be here. It's really special for me, and as well as uh, Brian and, uh, and Mike to be here. But uh, uh, Mark's always been my idol growing up, and I remember uh, when I was 15, I got a set of tickets for my birthday to be able to go down to Maple Leaf Gardens and have standing room seats and to watch Mark. And, uh, the late John McCauley got me a hockey stick, and I still have it. Uh, it was an orange one. It was an Oiler day, but uh, <laughs> times have changed, and uh, and it's just uh, it's going to be an honor to uh, to be able to play with uh, not only you, Mark, but uh, the rest of the crew. So we're uh, looking forward to having some fun. Uh, well, this was easy. <laughs> it's taken some time, but uh, I'm happy. It's uh, the days come. Um, I'm excited about playing in New York. I uh, I realize that we have a lot of work to do, and in the past. Uh, couple of years it uh, hasn't been uh, so sunny but uh, bright days are ahead there's going to be some clear skies we're going to get some things organized and uh, I've got a lot of confidence in what uh, Glenn wants to accomplish and and, uh, and his vision and, and what the coaching staff wants and um, it's going to be our job as players to go out and to uh, to perform and uh, I'm looking forward to the chance to go and do that thank you now we'll take some questions The New York portion of Lindros Trade Day is Eric Lindros with a New York Rangers sweater on next to uh, his boyhood idol, idol Mark Messier, and to Messier's left, defenseman Brian Leach, and Mike Richter was there, the Flower Town native, all gathering around. There's uh, Mike Richter on the far right, and Messier, they're all coming forward to celebrate, if you will, Eric Lindros's arrival in New York at Madison Square Garden. There's President and General Manager on the left of the Rangers, Glenn Sather, James Dolan, who is the CEO and President of Cablevision, which is the Rangers and Madison Square Garden's parent company. On the far left, uh, Ron Lowe, who is the Rangers head coach. And you heard Lowe say he thinks this is a huge step in the right direction for the New York Rangers, acquiring Eric Lindros, giving up the three young prospects that they have given up in this trade. He said Eric Lindros, by his way of thinking, will not have to change his style of play, that he will be finesse one night and he will give out the hits, if not take them on another. When you look at that Rangers lineup right there, Richter, Leach, Messier, aging veterans to be sure, but uh, I'll tell you what, at 28 years young in Eric Lindros, they certainly have a shot, especially if you believe published reports that Brett Hull may now be added to the Rangers mix. Who knows what might happen for the Broadway Blues at Madison Square Garden. So Eric Lindros, offering nothing uh, of any kind of acrimony toward the Philadelphia Flyers. Asked to talk about the Flyers and Bob Clark and his years in Philadelphia. He said, I choose not to get into that. Complimented the fans, complimented his time there, said he had a lot of friends there. Some within the organization might, might uh, contend with that, but uh, that's what Lindros had to say. The famous sports cliche goes, we take them one game at a time, and that is why none of the players really had spoken about the next upcoming game until it is upon us. And their next game, of course, Saturday, 1 o'clock, national television, Eric Lindros and the Rangers coming into town. Now, Eric Lindros, what is he doing? Well, he's up in New York right now, skating this afternoon with his team, getting ready for the game. And uh, Lindros, as you well know, the whole long documented story, and as you probably also know, he's already suffered his latest concussion here in this season. Missed a few games because of that. Has come back, though, played fairly well. One of the leaders on his team, naturally, in points and in the dressing room. Here's what Eric had to say today about coming down to face his old team. I mean, when you play in a city for uh, for their eight, nine years, uh, uh, certainly you grow attached to a, to a number of different things, and uh, yeah, it's going to be uh, it's going to be nice to get back and uh, see some friends and, uh, and play some hockey. I didn't get into the mudslinging. I'm not going to start now, and I really don't care to uh, to bring up any of that. Uh, um, I think uh, 
uh, I think it, I just don't feel that it's uh, it's needed to uh, needed to occur. I'm a Ranger. I want to go out and win for the Rangers. Um, you know, that's where it all pretty much starts and stops. It's uh, uh, you know, it's it's about winning and it's about going in and, uh, and when you got to play on the road, you, you got to go in and you play a, a grinding road game and, and that's what we're going to uh, that's what we're going to focus on. Eric Lindros saying all the right things, and the Flyers pretty much saying all the right things as well. I talked to Keith Primo, I talked to Dan McGillis, and uh, both of them said Eric's going to receive no special treatment other than the fact that he is one of the team's stars, and you have to watch out for any team stars at any given moment. But in terms of the physical play and the physical nature, they'll take a shot if he's in the way like they would against any one of the other hundreds of players that are in the NHL. Earlier today on Daily News Live, we talked to Bob Clark about the Eric Lindros situation. Here are Bob Clark's comments. The upside to to Janssen is so high we don't even know where he's going to finish and you know it'll take a couple more years before he's at his peak. Uh, Lindros at 28 uh, is a great player but he's not going to get any better I don't think so it'll still be if you want to compare what we got to what we gave up then I don't think you can do that for a few years. We're just now starting to get stable with our team, stable with our lines. Uh, we're starting to get production out of uh, a lot of different players and, and that's what we hope for and uh, when that happens you have a chance of being a good team. Uh, if Dopita can score some more and you know uh, Manderville scored the odd time now and uh, Ranheim can chip in some and you don't always rely on Leclerc or Primo or Recchi to be your big guns and uh, you know Gagne and Williams two young players. Gagne is going to be a star. These are we're a fairly well balanced club right now. And naturally, a lot easier for Bob Clark to make the type of comments he's making as his team is in first place, and he has made the moves to get them, uh, the players that get them into first place, and with the team with a chance to uh, increase their lead even more in the Atlantic Division. That will do it from the Flyers dressing room. Of course, much more tomorrow leading up to the Lindros Saturday, the sensational Saturday in sports that we have in South Philadelphia, and of course, full reports on First Union Sports Night on Saturday after the Flyers game. Guys, back upstairs. All right, Scott, thank you very much. And of course, the Rangers just four points behind the Flyers as well for first place in the division. Thanks, Scott. During LaSalle's recent four-game